Hi, this is Marjorie from Jennings. I'm the Marketing Associate at Jennings at Rexville, and thank you for joining us. Today, I have Leanne Spasic from North Coast Relocation. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Marjorie. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Leanne Spasic. My company is North Coast Residential Relocation, and for the past 15 years, I have specialized working with older adults, seniors, who are ready to right size, downsize from the larger family home, and move to a senior living community like Jennings, and make the change to a more secure and more comfortable environment. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So so what do you say to someone, since you're the expert in the business, what do you say to family members or someone who's actually in that position to help them uh, make that, how do they make that decision? Well, I ask them to look at where they live now and ask themselves the questions. Is the house that they're currently living in safe? Is it convenient? And does it support their quality of life? Does it support their daily living? And um, when I talk about a house being safe, I want to make sure that if stairs are an issue, I think it's a better thing to make a move than it is to get those electronic stairs lifts because, because that's not what suits you. So I think we should you know, have that house accommodate us. So if it's safe, if it's convenient, is it near the children and the people that you want to live with or near your friends, that's important. And then, you know, what are the things that you do every day? You know, if, if you draw or read or want to be with other people, are you close to your local community centers where you can do things that you enjoy? Awesome. And then, so you mentioned age, um, well-being, and health. Um, was there anything that you could say to people that are watching this that are at home and they, they really do think that they're in a, in a good position and they're taking care of themselves, but they're not really maybe seeing it from that perspective? They're not evaluating their age and their health and their well-being and maybe even their isolation. If I may, can I tell you a story that my grandmother told me? And she said, Leanne, come here. I need to tell you something important. I said, what? She said, be careful what you get used to because you can get used to anything. And I said, oh, I had to really think about that because what the things we get used to, it could be the dripping faucet in the laundry room. It could be the toilet that runs upstairs in the corner and you have to go jiggle, jiggle the handle. It could be a relationship, you know, with another person that you say, this is, doesn't fit me. And maybe that house that you're only living in, the, you know, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, those are the areas and, you know, the TV room. Um, those are the areas you're living in, but then you still have the dining room, another three bedrooms, a basement where the laundry room is, where you know you have to go downstairs to take laundry to wash, come back. How convenient is that house for you? And then why are you paying all the expenses of that house when you could be in a, in a more fitting, in, in, a, in a place that fits you and fits your needs for maybe less cost even. So Leanne, what do you say to the person who's living at home and they, they think they have everything that they need and they think they're enjoying life? Well, sometimes if they really are, that's great. But sometimes we just don't know what we don't have. And I, I liken that to, actually, I liken that to Alice in Wonderland and the Cheshire Cat in the Tree who says, Alice, where are you going? And she says, I don't know. And the cat says, well, if you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you get there? So, you know, we get into this complacency thinking that our house that we've lived in forever is familiar to us and we know where all the light switches are in the cupboards. But the fact is that that house is big and it has extra rooms that we don't use that we're paying for, utilities, taxes, insurance, repairs. So how do we get to a better place that's going to fit us better and be more comfortable. So um, I, I, it takes me back to a, a woman that I had worked with and she had a 
pretty big house, three stories. She's an artist who actually had a piece of her art in our Cleveland Art Museum, but she was wow. not painting and she was not doing her, her um, uh, pottery work that she does on a wheel because she couldn't get to her third floor because she had some mobility issues after knee surgeries. So um, I said to her, you know, um, let's talk about if you were to make a plan, what, what would be the ideal? What would you do? Um, and how would you move forward? And um, she said to me, you know, I'm staying here. I raised my kids here. They'll take me out of here feet first. <laughs> and I said, well, wait a minute. Let's talk about a reality. How can we make this better for you? And ultimately we sat down, we made a plan to move forward. Um, but it was late in the afternoon. She was getting tired and she hadn't eaten. She was diabetic as my mother was. So I was seeing the signs and I said, you know, have you eaten? And she said, well, you know, I wasn't hungry and let's go look in the refrigerator, see what there is for a snack. And all she had was eggs. And I said, you got some eggs in here. She says, well, I'm starting to cluck like a chicken because that's all I eat. And I said, why? You know, and she said, because that's what doesn't spoil in my refrigerator. Oh. So I said, look, I'm hungry too. Why don't we just get out of here? We'll go, we'll go over to the Chinese restaurant. She says, I love Chinese. So we went over to the Chinese restaurant. We had some, you know, an early dinner and she felt much, much better. And she understood that um, after we talked that things could be better. She didn't have to be isolated in that house. She didn't have to be separated from her her paints and her canvases and all those things. She didn't have to have someone go to the basement to put her laundry in the washing machine. So she made the move and here we were, I went to visit her, you know, a month and a half later. And here she was at the dining room entrance before people were ready to go into the dining room at her senior living community. And she had her lipstick on. She was happy. She, you know, her cheeks were filled out. She just looked like a different person, like came alive. And she had a, a room also in her apartment where she could have her paints and her easel. And she was doing the things that she loved. And she made new friends. And she became very much a social leader in that community, as opposed to living in that big house by herself with one son living in India and one in Oregon. So here she was and, and doing well and living a much better life than she was isolated in that house. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that because we find that a lot of people don't really even realize what they're missing because they're, they're, they feel content. And like you said before, that story your grandmother told is that's awesome that you really get used to what it is and you think that that's really quality enjoyment of living, but you could have so much more out there. So yes. what do you say to the person that's in fear? Like what, that, that they just, it's too much to deal with and they're just in fear. They're paralyzed by their fear. And that happens because we all, we don't like change and you can call it fear of the unknown or what's going to happen if I do this or that. And I think that it's really important to plan, you know, all our lives. We, you know, we have business, we have children, we plan for college for our kids and we're not planning now, you know, we hit 60, 70, 80, and you go, you know, I don't, what do I have to plan? I'm fine. But I think we do need to plan and we need to make the changes that we may anticipate for the future. And we need to make those changes before a crisis occurs. We need to make those changes when we're still in control. I do not want to be in a place where I have to say to my kids or they're telling me, Mom, you know, now that this has happened with you and dad or whatever that situation might be, now they're going to be in control of where I'm going to be and what they're going to do with my stuff. And um, I think I told you about um, the, the bug inspector, <laughs> the, the guy who came and he's, I had some, some of those little bugs upstairs and I, I, I you know, and he sprayed and I said, um, he said to me, I can spray every week. He said, but until you get rid of the paper that you have, those bugs are coming for lunch. So I, I shouldn't be telling the story, but personally got 
hired two guys, came and took everything out of my attic, took it all down in the garage. I got it all out of here. Um, it was papers from the 70s and 80s and 90s. The IRS doesn't want them. Nobody else wants them. My son did not need the cast from when he broke his foot, you know, in the 11th grade, and he's now 48. So come on, I got to get, got to get rid of this stuff. So that was a big project for me last week, but I'm doing it myself now. So they don't have to do it in 10 years when I'm, and, and, you know, there were things I wanted to see and I wanted to look at, you know, which I came up, I found my father's World War II medals from the military. He was a medic. And I had told my sister, I think they're in your attic. We can't find them. I'm so busted. They were in my attic. <laughs> so anyway, so I think, you know, those hermit crabs on the beach, they, I think they walk sideways, but, but when they outgrow their shell, they find, I thought they grew another one, but they, they find another shell to live in. So they're a new house for them. Those little crabs are so smart, and we people who are supposed to be so superior, we're not changing our shells. We, you know, hike around with these great big shells on our backs. We can change that. We can throw that off and be in a place that serves us well, that fits our needs and fits us, and allows us to be with other people, be socialized, and, and enjoy our lives. I love that analogy. That's so awesome because we do, we get used to our surroundings and we don't want to change and going through all those memories when you still have the ability to make those decisions, you get to decide then what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep anymore instead of someone else making that decision for you. So right. what, is, what do you have to say that, is there a um, trick? Is there a tool that you can use to help people work through this overwhelming process of, of deciding? Is it time? Well, it's not even a trick. <laughs> it's, um, I received a flyer from one of the schools and it said, um, plan your future like you plan your vacation. I'm going to call that school. I'm going to borrow that. Um, and I would like to ask our seniors, our older adults that, that we interact with, you know, to make a plan. So when I visit with a client, I sit down with them and say, you know, what are your druthers? If you could just say, where do you want to be tomorrow? What would you be doing? You know, if you where, what's your favorite thing? Do you want to be near family? Do you want to near, be near your church or your temple? Do you want to be um, near your community center or, your, you know, where the library is and where other people are playing cards or whatever you like to do? So let's talk about that. And then where would be an ideal place for you to enjoy? So we talk about that and I say, let's make a plan. So um, do, would you sell your house if it could be done and you could get the money from it to plan, you know, what the next few years of your life? So we sit down and we say, what needs to be done by whom, by when, and what might you realize from the sale of that property? So we go through that process and of course there's no obligation. We're just sitting there getting educated basically and then they can sit down and start thinking about what are the things that they might start doing whether they want to move now next year or in five years whatever their plan might be they have a plan in place so if something does happen they can i call it falling into the basket baskets already lined and ready because uh -huh. you know what you're going to do and it makes it a whole lot easier than living with indecision and fear to have a plan in place and you're ready to go when it's time to, to, to go to the next step you, you can do it awesome thank you what about um like so if they're overwhelmed by the actual just thought process is there should they make like a list or you know write something oh down i love lists <laughs> so i love lists and i want them to make a list about staying and moving. So I have a stay list and a move list. So if you stay in your house, what do you have to do regularly? What are the cost of those things? You know, what's landscaping? What's getting the grass cut? What's plowing snow? What about a new roof, which I had to do not that long ago. So these are the things, taxes, insurance, separate bills. What are you going to, 
what does that all cost? And what is, how much time, how much of your time do you spend on those things? And then to make a move, what does it cost to make a move? So if you're going to move to Jennings, what is your monthly rent? What does it include? Because almost all these things over here in this list will probably be included in a stay at Jennings. So I think it's important to, to weigh those, those um, lists against each other. Sometimes it's almost helpful to like look at that then, I guess, to, to actually have it in front of you and, and it helps them maybe, maybe they're not thinking of making the choice this week or next month, but they'll then start having that ball rolling and that process is in place to start thinking about, yeah, this is a lot. And then next month when they go to do their bills, they'll realize this is a lot and that there's a different way to live and that maybe I could spend more of my time enjoying the things I actually enjoy versus doing all these other things that I don't realize are not so fun and I'm not enjoying. I said, Marjorie, I think so many of us grow up with the idea that we work and, and do things to help other people. And I think it's really important to help other people, but I think it's a time also when we have to help ourselves and make sure that we're doing the right things for ourselves um, so that we can live a good life. And the better off we are, the more we can help others too. So I think it's really important that we're not spending time, you know, on maintaining a large home that we maintained for our children who are now off on their own to, to have a place for us. Yeah, I like that. So we're almost out of time. So I want to give you a minute to tell people how they can reach you if they need some advice or decide that they want to make a change. Okay, great. I also wanted to say I'm a licensed broker, but I don't sell the house. I bring in the realtors that are best for their area. So I will give you my phone number, 216-513-6800, or my email, the, or rather the um, website, www.northcoastrelo.com. And Leanne Spacek, again, is my name. And I thank you so much, Marjorie, for this time to have a conversation. Well, we appreciate you coming and talking to us. There's nothing better to hear from the professionals out there that have been doing it for years, and they know the business, and they, they, they have compassion, and, and uh, they're just really there to help. We really, really appreciate you coming today. Great. Thank okay. you so much. I enjoyed speaking with you. All right. Thank you. We'll see you soon, Leanne. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.